Hi there, my name's Kelly. I'm with Ryan's RV in Everett, Washington. And today, we're gonna give you a walkthrough on one of our specialty rental units. This is called a Compass by Thor, and it is a Ford diesel chassis that gets about 20 miles to the gallon if you're doing 60 miles an hour. It is a compact motorhome, as you can probably tell with it sitting here. And we're gonna take you through a few of the features and some of the advantages of using this particular motorhome. Now this motorhome is suited best for two, up to three people. Four is gonna be a little tight. Like I said, this is a, a very compact motorhome. It's the smallest thing that we rent in overall size. Okay, so um, we've skipped ahead a little bit. As you can see, we're already set up at a campsite or similar facsimile thereof. And it will fit in just about any campsite that is designed for an RV. Now, what I mean by that is its overall length with the rear slide in, and we'll get to that in a minute, is about 23 feet, okay? With the rear slide out, that's about 26 feet. Uh, any campsite with hookups for an RV with power, that kind of thing, you're going to have at least 20 feet of open parking area. The rest of the overhang should be able to hang over a curb and slide out behind that. <clears throat> any questions or concerns, you may want to check with the ranger or call ahead first, but every campsite I've ever been in, this guy's a shoe in. All right? So, <clears throat> a couple of things we want to show you here. The first one, for those of you that are football fans, since our camping season goes into preseason and regular games, we have a 32 inch TV outside. So if you're sitting outside, <coughs> want to enjoy the game, there you go. All right? For those of you that are big time golf fans and have to watch that on TV, my apologies. So for things on the outside, on the, on the curbside here that we need to talk about, curbside or door side as we call it, You've got two 110 outlets right here. These are important if you take an electric griddle, if you take a laptop you wanna charge, that sort of thing. When the motorhome is plugged in, or you have the generator running, and we'll get to that in a minute, these outlets will be live, meaning you can plug anything in just to a normal 110 outlet, okay? We have a storage compartment here. Keep some of your outside stuff dry while you're going down the road. This is the outside of the refrigerator service compartment. There's nothing you can do here. Please leave this closed. This is the outside of the hot water heater. This gets very hot. Um, don't lean anything up against it. Don't be too close to brush. But again, there's nothing that you can service in here. Please leave that door entirely alone. This is the outside of the furnace uh, or the furnace ducting. <clears throat> this also gets very hot. Again, you don't want to lean here and tie your shoes if you had the furnace on. Hopefully you're camping in warm enough weather. That's not a concern anyway. And lastly, on this side, we have our large outside storage compartment here. And it goes back in and through for things that are longer, such as golf clubs. The awning, you'll notice up top, this is a slightly different awning in that we don't have the arms that come down the sides. It is a power awning that will come out just with the push of a button. But because we don't have those arms down the sides, um, it is a little more susceptible to wind damage. So with this awning, we tell you, if you start getting wind gusts that are even close to 15 miles an hour, it's time to put the awning in. The awning will not retract by itself. It's something that you have to do manually. You, you cannot go off from a motorhome, whether it's this one or one of our other models, and leave the awning out, okay? The reason for that, quite simply, is in Washington, where we are, and a lot of other places as well, we don't know when the wind's gonna come up. Uh, when the wind comes up while you're out on the lake, or while you're out golfing, or while you're out doing whatever it is you have to do, um, you could come back, you might not have an awning on the coach anymore. Insurance will not cover awning damage. This is why many rental companies, including most of the national rental companies, do not equip their motorhomes with awnings. If you come home without the awning attached for any reason, well, you, you lost your deposit and probably then some. So now we're at the back end of the Compass Motorhome, and we're gonna go over a couple of things that, uh, that you should know. 
Firstly, uh, most of our rentals this year, unless you request otherwise, on the Compass model only, just on this model, we'll have a spare tire off of the hitch back here. So we'll have a spare tire mounted here for you. Um, the reason for that is there really isn't a good place anywhere else to put a spare tire. Uh, so unless you request us to not have it, for instance, let's say you're going to have a bike rack, something like that, we'll have a spare tire mounted on the back. Okay. Um, Second, this is the other access to your big compartment back here, and you'll see that we've got a power cord stored in here right now. We'll show you how to hook that up in a minute. Well, this was specifically designed to be big enough for some golf clubs or some longer stuff in the back back here. Now, I'm going to go inside, and this is a slide out that's going to come out that allows us to have a uh, full size RV queen bed on the inside. Uh, before I take the slide out, obviously, I want to inspect the area behind the motorhome to make sure that there's no obstacles. Clearly, we've got plenty of room to slide a room out about three feet. Okay, so now you can see the slide room is extended. So when I'm set up at the campground, I'm going to get my slide out. I'm going to tell my awning just by pushing the button inside. We'll show you that in a minute to go out. And I need to be reasonably level. By reasonably level, I just mean it doesn't feel like I'm sideways or too far front to back on the inside. Comfortable enough to sleep. And if I had eggs in a pan on the stove, they're not all hiding in one corner of the pan. Okay, that's important for your slide out. It's also important for your refrigerator to operate properly. And all of our motorhomes will come with a pack of stacking blocks. Um, we've shown that in some of the other videos. It's just like giant Legos. It's a pretty simple concept. So we're inside the Ford Compass. Um, and we are at the control panel. This is going to be something that you refer to quite a lot during your trip. There's a lot that goes on here, so kind of follow along with me. So our control panel here, our slide button, is, is one of the biggest things. It's got a button for extend and retract. To bring the slide in or out, we need the, the motorhome to be level, or level-ish. We need the parking brake to be set. We're going to hit the extend or retract button, depending on whether we want it to come in or out. And you simply press the button and hold the button until the slide quits moving. You'll hear it. You can see it from here, and you'll know when it stops. When it stops, let go. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is our water pump. Okay? If, I, if I'm going to wash my hands, if I'm going to use the sink, if I'm going to use the toilet or the shower, and I don't have a hose hooked up to a water source on the outside of the motorhome, I have to turn my water pump on. So all motorhomes, including this one, have a small water tank on board for water that you take with you when you go camping. That way, if you're on the road and you stop at a rest area, you stop alongside the road, you stop for lunch, mm -hmm. somebody needs to use the facilities or wash their hands, you've got water to do that, but you have to pressurize it by turning the water pump on here. Okay. In a campground, when you hook a hose up to it, you can turn the water pump back off and leave it off. Uh, next, we've got tank heaters. I really don't expect to be renting them um, the time of year when you would need that. But if you are, say, stopped on the top of a mountain pass and it is below freezing, you're welcome to turn your tank heaters on. This will just keep your tanks from freezing, provided that you have your generator running or you're plugged into 110AC. Okay. Let's talk about the generator for a minute. If you're going uh, down the road and it's hot in the motorhome, the cab air conditioner is designed to cool just this little front area here, so it's not going to do a very good job of keeping your passengers cool or keeping it cool if it gets really hot. So you'll need the air conditioner on the roof. There's a big air conditioner on the roof that'll keep the whole coach cool just fine, but it requires either an RV uh, outlet style hookup of, you know, a 30 amp outlet or um, that you start your generator. You're welcome to run the generator while going down the road. It does use propane from your propane tank. Um, so you have to make sure that you've got propane, obviously. But to start it, you simply press and hold the start button for three to, three to ten seconds. The generator will start up. So once the generator started, uh, your microwave lights will come on, which will be the easiest way to tell if you have AC uh, or 110 volt power. And once you've got 110 power, you can start the air conditioner on the roof. It'll keep the whole coach cool. Uh, next, we've got your gauge package. So you've got these four little lights right here, and you've got a bunch of buttons down here. I've got one for liquid propane, 
which tells me I've currently got a third of a tank of liquid propane. If I'm out camping and I need to be using the generator, it's probably about time to think where I'm going to get some propane and put in there because I don't want to run out. Okay. I need propane for my generator. I need it for, and again, this is only for this model. I need propane for my generator. I need propane for the hot water heater. I need propane to run the refrigerator if I'm not plugged into a 110 power source. Uh, and the furnace. Okay, All of those require liquid propane. Next is my battery condition. So I press this. You see right now it shows battery is at two-thirds. That's pretty normal while I'm camping with everything on. I've got every light in or every light on in this motorhome right now and we're not plugged into into a 110 power source. If my motor was running, the, the motor for the the chassis, my generator was was on or I was plugged into a 110 power source, batteries will always read fully charged because they've got juice going to them. So don't uh, let your batteries go dead. Plug in for 10 minutes and think they're fully charged. It really takes about four hours of uh, continuing charging to get you both batteries back up to 100%. Okay. Fresh water. If I press this, the fresh water is simply the water that I've put in the motorhome that I'm taking with me to go down the road. And we'll cover how you do that on the outside. This is just to tell you how much you've got with you. We recommend that you've got at least a third of a tank while you're traveling, so if somebody does need to use the facilities, or they need to wash their hands, etc., you've got a little bit of water with you, okay? Black water is showing empty, which is always the best way to show a black water tank. That's simply your sewage, okay? That's what goes down the toilet. And I'll probably say this again later in the video, the only items that can go down an RV toilet are human waste and RV toilet paper. Nothing else goes down the chute. Uh, next, we've got two gray tanks. You've got a, a, a left and a right. The right gray tank is the one for your kitchen, your galley, your sink. Okay. Your left gray tank is the one for the shower. So you've got two separate gray tanks on board that hold the wastewater after it goes down the drain. Okay. Um, Above that, we have the AM, FM, uh, radio, CD, CD player. It's got Bluetooth. It's got. Uh, it's ready to for you to plug your phone into this USB, B and use Pandora or other apps. Um, it'll find your phone via Bluetooth. The reason it's a DVD player is you have three TVs on board. You've got three. I think they're all 32 inch. You've got the one here. You've got one I showed you outside, and there's another one in the bedroom. So for those of you who are going to be tailgating and you want to watch football on all three screens, you've got the ability to do that. Additionally, you can put a DVD into this player and watch the DVD on any one of the three screens throughout the coach. This also gives you stereo sound on the inside, and I've got two outside speakers. So you can listen to the radio or whatever's on your TV while you're inside or outside the coach. Again, kind of with tailgating in mind. Okay. Other than that, Radio works much like you would expect a radio to work. It also has a alarm clock feature built in. So if you uh, don't have that on your phone or you want to back up, you can program it for an alarm. Okay, since we're in the doorway, I'm going to cover a couple more things here really quick. Um, one is your fire extinguisher. You'll always have a fire extinguisher loaded, ready to go. Right above it is the smoke detector. Next to the smoke detector, you'll see uh, something that says King on it. That is your TV antenna. Um, all you need to know about that TV antenna is if you turn the TV on, and you'll, of course, when you turn the TV on, you'll have to run through the programming for the stations. If you're getting a station that's a little bit uh, fuzzy or digital cutting in and out, <clears throat> you can turn this dial, and that will fine-tune your uh, TV station for you. Okay, um, back down here, I've got three switches here. Um, the most important one is this uh, battery disconnect switch with use and store. You're going to want to have this switch on use the entire time you're using your RV, except if you're on a Washington State ferry or some other ferry that requires everything to be turned off, um, or if you're getting engine fuel. If you're getting engine fuel and you want to ensure that all your appliances are off and your furnace isn't going to fire while you're in the gas station, which certainly isn't recommended, you can put that to store mode. 
Now everything in your motorhome, except for the, obviously you can still start the engine with the key, everything's going to be dead. I just turned off the refrigerator, the hot water heater, the furnace, all of my lights, my water pump, everything is shut off. Okay. Um, this is assuming that I'm not plugged into a uh, 110 volt AC power source and my engine is not running. If I turn it back on, all my lights just came back on, my refrigerator just came back on, everything's working again. Next is the awning button. This is a one touch awning situation. So if I hit out, my awning's rolling out by itself. I don't have to do anything else, it's done. All I have to do is remember to put it in before I go. I can do that by hitting in. Okay, so that's that one. And lastly, it's just a step light recommend that you leave that on if you're going to be gone at night and come back and want to be able to see what you're doing. Otherwise you're looking for that flashlight app on your phone. Um, here we have, these are just simply light switches. So I've got light switches on the ceiling. This is the main body of the coach. Uh, the outside one is porch light. This lower one is probably courtesy lights. Obviously we've got good kitchen storage here with these marine styled European looking doors and fancy handles. We have a stainless steel sink that's deep enough you can get a pan in there to, to wash it and get it clean. Um, your water pump would have to be on for this to be functioning and you've got a spray function here as well for doing dishes. Okay. For the stove, uh, our, assuming that our propane is on, I will turn the right or left knob, depending on which burner I want to use, to the large flame symbol. Instructions are also here if you need them. I'm going to press and hold that button in. While I'm pressing that button in, I'm going to take my lighter match or uh, igniter stick, light that flame. I need to hold it in for about 10 seconds. Then I can let go and it will stay lit. Okay, it's got a safety feature, so it will not keep pumping propane in if it's not lit. That's all there is to that guy. Pretty simple. So, microwave. This works pretty much just like your microwave at home. Um, this is a convection microwave. If you're not familiar with how to use convection microwaves, you can use it like a regular microwave or an oven or both at the same time. Lots of videos online that will explain that. We don't need to go into it here because most of you will know what that is by now. Um, next is the refrigerator. The refrigerator is really pretty simple. Uh, to open it, I'm going to push up on this as I pull the door. Open the refrigerator up. You can see that we've got room in there for stuff to take with us. And to turn it on, I simply press the on button and then leave, I can totally leave it alone, okay? It's gonna take care of itself. If I'm plugged into a 110 power supply or my generator's running, it will run on 110 AC power. If I'm not, it will turn on the propane uh, here at the refrigerator. It will light the propane. It'll keep the propane lit while I'm going down the road. And it's just always gonna stay cool provided that we're parked reasonably level, okay? We talked about that earlier. You don't have to be perfect, but it needs to feel like you're level when you're in here walking around, hanging out. Okay? Um, in the event that there is air in the line, or there's some other issue, there's an indicator right here on the, on the front that will come on with the letter F for fault. Yeah, we're going to go with that. It's F for fault. And that simply means that uh, your refrigerator's having an issue. There's something not working right, and it's not on. When that happens, you will push the on-off button one time to turn it off. We're going to leave it off for a count of 10. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and turn it back on. Now that don't typically happen when you're plugged into AC or 110 volt power. That will happen when you're on gas, and it's usually because there's air in the line. So we turned off our propane to get it filled. Uh, it's been off for a while, something's going on, so there's not enough propane to get the fridge lit. Usually by the time you've done that twice, three times at the most, it will light. Um, the only other instance that you will get that refrigerator that is giving you the little letter F will be if it's really hot day, uh, 
and maybe you got some guests in and everybody's fridge surfing looking for something cool to drink and they're opening and closing this door a lot. If the refrigerator over a few hours can't tell that it's doing its job, meaning it's not getting colder inside the refrigerator, it, it's going to shut down. It's a safety feature. It doesn't want to have a problem that ends up resulting in something catastrophic. So it's just going to shut itself off. Okay. So if it's a hot afternoon and you've had people in here and you're keeping drinks in the fridge like you're tailgating at a football game, um, yeah, you need to take an ice chest and leave the fridge closed for a while because it's not going to work unless you like warm beverages. Uh, it, that, it can't keep up quite as fast as a residential refrigerator. It's a completely different process. And if you put warm food in, it very commonly will take 8 to 10 hours to get things cooled back down. Okay? So right now the refrigerator is on. There's a little light next to my LP gas button. Um, and that will tell me that everything's fine. As long as I don't have the letter F, we're passing. That's all good, right? So I'm going to turn this back off for now. And it's off. Um, let's just keep working our way back. <clears throat> So, you saw earlier in the video, we put the slide room out. If the slide room was in, this part is on the slide. This would be in right about to the edge here. I can still get at my bank of drawers underneath here if I've got some clothes that are put away. Um, during the day, if I like, I can sit back here and watch a TV that you'll see in a minute that's up here in the corner, a 32-inch TV. I can also take this base will support the dinette table that we'll demonstrate in a minute that can go either in front of this sofa or in front of the sofa up top. Okay, or up, up front there, the sofa behind the driver's seat. <clears throat> but since this is the bedroom, let's show you where you're going to be sleeping. When I'm going to run the slide room in or, uh, or out, I guess, obviously, this has to be in the upright position. This is kind of like a Murphy bed, okay? If I try to bring the slide room in with it in sleeping mode, I'm going to have a catastrophic failure. So you can see we got a regular mattress under here. It's actually a fairly, fairly nice mattress. Um, but it does have to be in the up position for this to come in. Nice thing about it, if you don't feel like making the bed and you got company coming over, now it's a sofa. All right. Okay, so we're in the bedroom of the Compass Motorhome now. And we've got a few things that we need to talk about here. First, is this little device right here. This is our climate control for the motorhome. All right, so with the mode button, I did go ahead and activate the furnace. Just by pushing the mode button, I got, got the furnace emblem to come on, and I've got it set for 90 degrees, which is about what it takes. It's pretty warm here. The furnace is coming on now. I'm gonna turn it back off because I'm plenty warm enough. Um, I can press it again, and I would get the AC mode, but again, I have to have 110 volt power plugged into a really good power source, and I don't mean a long extension cord plugged into an outlet someplace, an RV outlet. If you have any questions about that, talk to us on a walkthrough. Um, you can't plug it into a normal outlet and get your AC to work, at least not for very long. This guy right here is our water heater control. This motorhome is equipped with an on-demand water heater. What that means is, is I'm not taking a tank of hot water with me down the road. It's going to create it as I need it. Um, this red light for this red button here, I'm going to press that once. It's going to come on. It tells me that it's set for 105. I can turn it up or down. That's going to give us hot water in our shower and our, our sink if we want to do that. Okay. Normally, I want this off unless I'm going to be using hot water because it is a propane thief. This is our, our bank of 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses. Odds of you needing to get in here are very, very slim. But let's say everything works in the motorhome just fine except uh, the microwave. Well, okay, in that case, maybe I really do need to come down here, find a microwave, and flip that breaker. Um, in the event that one of these 12-volt fuses is out, there'll be a red light next to it to show you which one needs to be changed. Um, truthfully, that happens to us less than twice a year with all of our rentals. It's not likely to happen to you. Okay. Well, we're still in the bedroom of the Compass. We're just looking at the other side of the motorhome now. Uh, a couple of things in here we need to talk about. The most important is right here. That is your liquid propane detector. In the unlikely event that that is going off, you need to do three things very quickly. One, you're going to check the stove to make sure that the stove is turned off immediately. 
Second, if it wasn't, uh, if the stove wasn't on, so that's not the source of our propane, you're going to evacuate everyone from the motorhome immediately in a very rapid fashion. Treat it just like a fire emergency. Um, on the outside of the coach, you're going to turn off the propane at the propane bottle, and we'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Um, leave the doors open, let it air out. Do not come back in the motorhome until that qu quits beeping at you. And understand that propane, one, eliminates oxygen from, from the environment. So um, if, it, if, if you had a propane leak while you were sleeping, you might not wake up. But more likely, it's highly explosive. One gallon of propane can do a lot more damage than 10 gallons of gasoline. Get out of the motorhome, leave the door open, let it air out. Don't come back in until this guy shuts off. Um, and you should probably make my phone ring. Uh, that's definitely something worth calling the store about. We do safety checks on these regularly. I have not had a, a propane issue in my rental fleet ever. I don't want you to be the first. Okay, uh, 110 outlet. Again, just a typical U.S. residential style outlet. Again, those only work with either the generator running or being plugged into an AC power source. Here we've got three switches. These are for overhead lights. And a 32-inch TV. Same thing with the TV. You have to have an AC power source. So you're going to start the generator or be plugged in. Throughout the motorhome, you've got at least two sets of these. These are USB charging ports. Um, you've got this one here, you've got one up front, and you've also got a USB charger on the stereo right behind the passenger seat. So you can keep your phone charged and your other electronic devices. All right, we're going to pan up to the top. This is our AC unit, or our air conditioning unit. A um, couple of things you want to know about this once it's turned on and running. If I'm in the bedroom and I want to cool it down back here fast so I can get, get to sleep, if I take and open these louvers, this is a central dump, so this will dump all of the AC right here, right now, and will cool this area very, very quickly. If I'm going to have people on both ends of the motorhome, or I'm going to be up front more, I want to close those louvers, and now it's going to be forced out this series of air conditioning vents that run from the back to the front of the motorhome. And if I want more air in the front, I simply close these louvers in the back, and now most of my air air uh, conditioning from the roof will be pumped up front. Pretty simple concept. Okay. Okay, let's cover the lavatory. So a couple of things here. One, for privacy, I've got this door with a magnetic latch that I just give a tug. Close it off. And I have privacy. If I'm going to be using the bathroom for a shower or a changing area, I can take this door that also has a magnetic latch. Give it a good shove push it that way. Now I've got privacy from the front of the coach. So with my bed in the upright position and my bath or my bedroom blinds closed, I've got a big changing area here, plenty of room to do whatever I want to do and don't feel like I'm stuck in a small bathroom anymore because this is actually a very large bathroom for an RV. Okay. Um, so when you are renting a motorhome from us under the sink, this one hasn't gone out yet, so it's not in here yet, but there will be six rolls of RV toilet paper. It's important that you only use RV Marine toilet paper. We will supply as much for you for your trip as you think that you need. The uh, more water and the least amount of toilet paper down the chute um, than you can use and still be sanitary is recommended for the health of the system. Uh, the waste disposal system in the RV makes it much easier to dump. If you got wads and wads of toilet paper down there and not enough water, you might be at the dump station a while. Um, or worse, have a, have a plugged toilet. Okay, But normally that stuff is under here, as well as just some simple drop-ins like you've used for a dishwasher or now even laundry detergent comes that way, just little plastic drop-ins. After you've completed your your dumping process, you take one, drop it down the toilet. It just helps keep things smelling fresh. Okay, uh, so other things in the bathroom that we need to talk about. <clears throat> if I'm going to wash my hands or flush the toilet, again the water pump switch has to be on. That's on our control panel by the front door. For our shower, these do have a shut off on the shower head so I can get it to temperature once, turn the water on, um, turn it back off as I need to, 
you want to conserve water, your tanks are reasonably compact on this motorhome. So you're going to have enough uh, capacity for three very short showers, like five minutes each. Your tank's going to be full. You're going to have to dump. Okay, unless you're in a full hookup site. Um, in which case, it doesn't really matter. You can just go and tell your heart's content, um, provided that your gray tank valve is open and your sewer hose is hooked up and your freshwater hose is hooked up. Again, we'll cover that outside when we're ready. Uh, last thing to talk about in here really is the toilet. So, um, an RV toilet will not have much, if any, water in it when it's at rest because we don't want a full tank of water when we're going down the road sloshing around all over the bathroom and we want to conserve water so uh, if someone's going to go number one quite simply go number one do what you have to do um, in the unlikely event you have younger boys or young men traveling with you you might want to mention to them that they need to sit down unless you want to clean up because it's pretty hard to do that while you're driving down the road uh, my son can attest to that so back of the toilet, real, real easy. If I'm going to uh, flush the toilet, I just press that down with my water pump on, water will come down. It's gravity only, it will drop into the holding tank. If I need to add water to the toilet bowl, because I'm going to do more than just go number one, if you very gently press down on this lever, you'll see the water come on and the water level will rise in the toilet. Um, Simply put, you want more water in the bowl than you're going to leave anything else for a deposit. Otherwise, you're going to get voted off the island really fast. The entire part of the motorhome will smell like an outhouse. All right, so add enough water. When you're done, flush it. It's gone. You don't have to see it again unless you're the lucky individual that gets to dump your holding tanks. Okay. Uh, lastly, in here, we've got an, an exhaust fan. If you're taking a shower or need to air out the bathroom, simply raise this vent. There's a switch here that we turn on. It's an exhaust fan that will pull air out the roof. Your vent has to be back down before you go down the road, or you will come back without the vent or with a damaged vent, which we will have to charge you for. Okay, so I'll roll that back down. So, uh, if you're set up someplace like I'm set up now where we don't have a dedicated 110 power supply and it's a fairly warm day but it really I don't need my air conditioner I just want to cool it off in here this is a high efficiency 12 volt meaning it'll run on battery power um, exhaust fan and if I pull down on this triangular lever and turn it I'm opening a vent right now so my vent is open Incidentally, this vent is the only one in the motorhome, the one that is in the living area with this big 12 volt exhaust fan. This vent can be open while you're going down the road. It has a special cover for it on the roof, okay? So if I want to keep some air circulation going without having a bunch of windows open, I raise that. I've got a fan on button, which we'll show you a picture of in a second. And it's got a speed selector, and this is pulling air, hot air, from near the top of the motorhome and pushing it out okay it's an alternative to the air conditioner which makes it so you don't have to run your generator and it's silent i can't even hear it okay a few more things to cover in the front of the motorhome we're almost done on the inside i've got another charging center here for for with four usb charging ports to keep your devices charged up uh, we have a uh, outlet down here at the floor and another one there so again you've got plenty of plenty of places to plug in um, let's talk about this special skylight. So this is a rather special skylight that this motorhome has to allow light in during the day. You're going to want to leave this uh, skylight exposed like this while you are traveling. At night, when you're not going down the road, I've got a switch right here that will run the power shade down. So if you want to elim eliminate the light coming in while you are not driving, you can run the power shade down. The reason that I say while you're not driving is the way that these are designed. You will get some rattling going on while you're driving if it's down. It wasn't designed for that. It was designed to be open while traveling and closed while stopped if you don't want the light. But just push of a button takes seven or eight seconds. Really pretty easy. 
Okay, a few things right here real quick. So you, we've got a Velcro tab here. There's a Velcro tab up underneath and then all the way around the front of the windshield and back to here um, that will allow you to take your privacy curtain that just Velcros and snaps on for privacy at night so people can't see in. Additionally, this seat will turn around and face the back for an extra seat. Um, it needs to slide forward. I'm going to demonstrate this because it's a little tricky. And it is easier with the passenger door open. This seat will turn around and face the back. Uh, only, again, only in this model. First thing we need to do is slide it forward. We're going to kick the back up a little bit. So that will clear. This lever is the release that lets it swivel. And sometimes you got to motivate it a little bit there. It's brand new, so everything's still a little stiff. And now I've got another place to seat or, or sit if I've got company over. So we can have two or three on the sofa and one more here. Okay. And then I just swivel it back. It locks. And I can put it back in my normal position. Uh, up front, real quick, a few things. Lumbar support for the driver. These armrests come up and down, they're adjustable. Uh, emergency brake, pretty self explanatory. 12 volt charging ports, there's two of them up here. Um, this is your radio and control center and Bluetooth hookup and all of that, which is I'm not going to get into in detail. Um, if you want us to do that on the walkthrough, we will. And it drives pretty much like a Ford van. Okay? Um, very compact, very easy to drive, very little tail swing. You may have up to three feet of tail swing, meaning if you're three feet away from something and turned hard, hard right or hard left, you need to watch both mirrors. It's possible you'd clip it. But you do have a backup camera in the mirror that will come on. When you can see the obstacle in the backup camera, you're past it. Okay, uh, I think that's all I'm going to go into for up here. The rest of it, any other questions you have, we should do on the walkthrough in person. Okay, let's talk about the sofa and table here real quick. So this is the sofa, the way it's set up when you pick up the motorhome. If I was going to use it to take a nap, I simply lift up, pull toward me, pull it flat, I can cut the seat belts down, and now it's a bed. To put it back, want to get a running start like that okay if I'm going to set up the table I'm going to keep that up so we can see a little bit better here this comes down I need that and I need the table to come out here put that back put that back okay so I, I take the pole I take this base I drop the pole into the hole I turn the pull clockwise. It will only work if I turn it clockwise. It'll lock into shape or lock into position there. I give it a couple more turns and now it's locked in there nice and tight. Then I can take my table and I've got a good place to eat, read, work on my laptop, whatever I want to do. Okay. This same pull and table will work the exact same way in the back. So if somebody's going to work and somebody's going to watch TV, you've got that option. Okay, so here we are at the campsite, and we're going to show you a couple of things. Um, first is, how do I hook up? What do I need to do when I get to where I'm going? So I've backed into my site, which is typically what you will do. I've made sure that I've got the power hookup and the water hookup pretty close to where the pedestal is to hook up to. Normally that's at the back of your campsite on the driver's side. Every once in a while you'll find an exception, but just check it out before you set your RV up to make sure the hoses and things are going to reach. Your power cord and your water hose is about 25 feet long. Um, sewer you don't need to worry about. Usually it's always at the back of the site if you have sewer hookup. If not, that's okay. Um, you can always dump on your way out of the park. Okay, so I've backed into my site. Now here you'll notice I've used some big blocks of wood that you won't normally take with you, but you're never going to get to park on grass. RV parks are virtually always gravel pad or concrete pad or blacktop, something pretty pretty firm. Um, because I was on grass, I, I opted to use some larger blocks to get the RV somewhat level. We will send you with a 10 pack of what we call RV Legos. And these real simply,
look like so. So if I was going to level the RV out a little bit more, I would put those down, or normally you're not going to have blocks, that's what you're going to use. And you can even stack them two at a time, like this. I'm going to get them set up on both sides and drive the tire up on them just to get the RV level from front to back. Of course, you can adjust it from side to side that way as well. Okay, so we've got our blocks level and we're ready to pull up on them. The only important thing to remember is that you want the tire squarely on the block. And what I mean by that is you don't want half the tire sitting on the blocks and half the tire hanging off. That's a pretty good uh, way to make sure that you need to spare tire on the way home. It causes tread separation in the tire. So we want the whole tire on the blocks and you can stack them up as high as you need to to get the motor home level. We send you with a 10 pack. Normally that's all you need. Okay. Moving on back here, when I'm ready to set up, I'm going to need a couple more things. I'm going to need a water hose. So this is our special fresh water, water hose. We don't recommend you bring one from home unless it's lined, designed for fresh water or drinking water. And on the end of this hose, we always give you a brass water pressure regulator. Now the reason that this is important and it's critical where I happen to be right now, I know where I happen to be right now has very high water pressure. Um, sometimes you know, sometimes you don't, sometimes it changes. The RVs are designed for about 40 PSI of water pressure. I know that the faucet that I'm going to hook up to right here is more than double that. And without this water pressure regulator, I'm going to blow the valve out in my toilet and probably some of my faucets. So I'm going to have water everywhere. Um, not good. Not a good way to, to end your trip because your, your plumbing system will be pretty much done at that point until you get professional uh, repair services. Okay, but this is a specially lined RV water hose. Simply, I'm going to take the water pressure regulator on the supply end. Go back to just my, my normal hose hookup. Bring my water hose across. Now the only confusion that happens when you're putting water in your RV is there's two places to put water in. One says fresh water connection and it's just a hole that I put the hose in and turn the water on. That's for my fresh water tank for water that I'm going to take with me. Okay? In a campsite with a hose hookup, I'm not really going to use that water because that would require that I use the water pump inside. It's something that you can hear when it comes on. Um, underneath is a city water connection and that is designed for me to just hook the hose to. I just thread the hose onto the connection just like so. Get it good and snug turn my water pressure on or my water on and now I have water pressure inside the coach that comes from the water hose. All right, so I don't need my water pump, I don't need my water tank, I'm just using pressure from the hose. Okay, next thing we're going to do is hook up our power cord. Now on this one our power hookup is right here and this uses a Marine Co 30 amp power plug just like uh, a lot of boats would use. So if you're out and you left, left your power cord at the site or you damaged it in some way and needed another one, uh, most RV stores and most marine stores, big stores like Dick's Sporting Goods, that kind of thing, um, uh, certainly Bass Pro Outlet, those big kinds of outdoor supply stores, they'll have an RV and boat section and they'll probably have these cords for you. I'm going to show you what this end looks like here. Looks just like that. Okay, some of them are straight, some of them are angled. This one's angled, it doesn't have to be. You put that on, it twists to lock into place. You can thread that down to lock and I've got a nice tight power connection. And I'm going to take the other end of the hose that will plug into our power outlet. If you are going to use your air conditioner, you have to plug into a 30 amp RV outlet that looks just like this. 
anytime you're looking for a site and the site says it's 30 amp or 50 amp, they will have a 30 amp outlet as well as a 50 amp outlet. You only need the 30 amp for anything that we're going to rent you. The 50 amp outlets are for the real big fifth wheels, the real big diesel buses, the stuff with a couple of air conditioners and a whole lot more uh, power consumption than what you're going to use. So next I'm going to take this and plug it into my power cord box. Just like so. I now have power inside the motorhome and I can verify that real easily just by looking at the microwave. If the microwave lights are on, I have power. If they're not, I don't. It's that simple. Now, in the event I was going to park this at a residence someplace without an RV power cord, in your RV we will have a park adapter which has the 30 amp plug on one side and your typical extension or outlet plug on the other side. This will work to keep your batteries up, to keep your lights on, to run your TVs. It should even run your microwave. It will not power your air conditioner. So if you're using this in a standard outlet, leave the air conditioning off. Turning it on, it might work for a little bit. Something's going to melt. You're going to bl uh, blow a breaker. You're going to melt a cord. You're going to do something we don't want to do. So again, with this, no air conditioning. Everything else is fine. So I've got power, I've got water. What if I'm in a full hookup site? Um, a full hookup site means that you also have sewer connection. Um, most full hookup sites are designed for much bigger RVs, but that's not saying you won't end up at one. A lot of the nicer parks, the parks in Arizona, some of the big stuff, they've got full hookup. So I'm going to show you how to hook up the hose. It's the same process that you would use if you weren't in a full hookup site, but you had used the RV, you'd use the toilet, the shower, the sink, and you're going to pull out of the campground. On your way out, there's always a dump station. It's almost always by the last bathroom on your way out. So the bathroom closest to the front gate almost always has a dump station and they're marked. So I'm going to grab my sewer hose. Now, uh, we'll show you in your walkthrough where the sewer hose is stored on this model. Um, and we supply uh, gloves. You'll have rubber gloves in the door pocket on the driver's door that you can use for sanitary reasons. Um, you're, you're welcome to them. That's what they're there for. So I'm going to grab my sewer hose. I'm going to unlock this back compartment, which I've already done. And inside here, I've got a bunch of valves and a place to hook the hose to. So we're going to take the RV end of the hose, which looks like this, has, has a couple little teeth on it to grab. And I'm going to just reach up underneath here. Uh, just twist locks on. It's real easy. You'll see how it twists locks on. The hardest thing is just reaching up underneath there to do it. So once I've done that, I'm going to take the business end of the sewer hose, get my other cords and stuff out of the way here. And here is my sewer connection. Now your hose, the hose that we give you, this fitting will be threaded and you can thread it on and then snap the hose on. I somehow managed to get here without one of our company hoses, so this is a personal hose. Most RV parks require that that fitting be threaded if it's a full hookup site. We will send you with a threaded connection. Um, now we are ready to open our gray tanks. Now again, our gray tank is our sink and our showers. Okay. The reason I'm going to open them is while I'm in the park, we don't want those to fill up. We want to be able to shower without having to worry about how much water is in the tank. We are not going to open our sewage tank. And I'll show you the difference here in just a minute. The sewage or black water tank is the waste that has gone down the toilet and it's in that holding tank. The reason we're not going to open that valve at this time is if that valve is open all the time when you're flushing the toilet, the liquid runs off the paper and the solids 
don't have anything to wash them away because the bottom of the tank is quite flat. They can build up. You can end up with a plug, uh, plug to toilet and a uh, ugly paper mache project. We don't want that. So we're going to leave that valve closed until we're ready to leave the campsite. One of the last things we'll do will be pull that valve, dump that waste tank. We'll close the valve, put some water down the toilet, pull it again to get it rinsed out, rinse the hose out, put it away. Okay. We are looking in the waste utility closet. This is where we've got all of our valves for dumping and such. Now we've skipped ahead a little bit, so I'm going to back up just a second and show you again. That's my sewer hose connection. Okay. It just locks on with those teeth. It comes up under here and it locks on. The cap locks on the same way, so when I take that off, I will put the cap back on to put everything away. But what we've got in here is a series of valves, and we need to understand what they are. In the back, back here, you can see I've got two gray valves. I've got one on the left, and I've got one on the right. The one on the left is for the left side of the motorhome, which is the shower. The one on the right is for the right side of the motorhome, which is the galley or the kitchen sink. So if I was going to dump the kitchen sink, I would pull the valve toward me and it's already open. And then I would open this valve, um, which is the master valve for the gray water. And now I'm dumping the kitchen sink. If I was going to dump the shower, I would grab this valve and pull it toward me. And now that will dump the water from the shower. Again, I've got this valve open, so it's just going to flow right through. One nice feature about doing it this way with two tanks that connect into one, with this valve closed and both gray tank valves open, the gray tank valves are now connected. So a lot of times people don't put much of anything down their kitchen sink. This allows you to store more shower water in the gray tank for the kitchen sink and vice versa. They're connected. So essentially they're one tank. I have the option of having them separated, but with both valves open, they are the same tank at this point. So pull the gray. The gray water is going to flush through the hose. I can see it through my clear fitting. The hose would shake and move a little bit. They're empty, so there's not much to show you. When it's done, I simply close that valve. If I wish, I close my two tank valves just by pushing them in, okay? Um, and that's how you handle the gray system. The black tank is the bigger valve right here. The big black valve is the black tank. It's nice that they've color-coded the handles for us. To dump the black tank, I simply pull it toward me. If there was anything in the toilet tank, I, I would hear it, I would see it. It's going to run down through my hose go out the bottom. I'm going to leave that open until it's fully emptied. Close the valve. Okay. Um, when I'm done doing that, I need to rinse the hose out. So when I'm dumping, typically I will dump the black first and then the gray. The gray will help rinse the black tank out. Otherwise, when I'm done at the dump station, um, when I disconnect the hose, I'm going to hold the hose up, and at the dump station, there's another hose, a rinse hose. I can run some water through, rinse the hose out, kind of shake it out, make sure it's all empty, get it sanitary before I put it away. Okay? You don't want to have to deal with a dirty dump hose the next time if you left it that way, and neither would the next person using the motorhome. So we do that to keep it sanitary. What we don't do is use my fresh water hose to rinse out the end of the sewer hose. Okay? You would think I would have to explain that, but I won't never want this to touch that. We don't want crass bacteria. Okay? That's all there is to dumping. When I'm done, I'm going to put this cap back on the sewer. Um, and it's important that I do that. If you've seen any of my other videos or had a walkthrough, you'll know why. The State Patrol can fine you $124 if that's not on there, okay? Once it's on, I can pivot that up out of the way, take this cover, 
turn this cover a couple of times and it'll just thread right on there for me. So once that cover's threaded on, I'm done. Close the compartment, lock it with the key. Sewer's all done. There's just a couple more things we need to talk about on the outside of the motorhome and when we're hooking up. There is a cable hookup right here underneath the power cord. It's unlikely that most parks you'd be staying in do have cable hookup, but it is an option, okay? Um, that is where you would hook up cable if they have cable available. Most parks or many more parks now have Wi-Fi available, and with Wi-Fi you can take your iPad or your Android device, plug in an HDMI adap adapter and plug into any of the three TVs with your HDMI so you can stream Netflix or your favorite shows or whatever you want via your iPad or your, your Android device. Um, that's kind of the old school option, but it's still on there. I think we'll see those I think we'll see those discontinued over the next couple of years. Also, right here we have an outside shower. This is pretty cool. Um, this is pretty cool for a lot of reasons. You've got hot and cold running water right here, just like a shower you would have on the inside. Now, a lot of people I know will take a small plastic table with them, put that right here. This becomes their dishwashing station, becomes their fish cleaning station, whatever it is you're into. It's nice to be able to keep as much mess out of the inside of the motorhome as you can. It also comes in handy if somebody uh, gets into sand, you've got a, a, you know, whatever you've gotten into, you don't want to take it to the motorhome, you do have hot and cold running water out here. Um, I don't recommend that you take a regular shower in the park without at least a swimsuit on. I think you get arrested for that. But uh, <laughs> it is nice to be able to have the hot, hot cold running water out here. In a pinch, you can also use this to rinse out your sewer hose. It's much better to pump the water from here because there's nothing going back into the coach. You can rinse your sewer hose from the side. Maybe you had an accident and you made a little bit of a mess, you can clean yourself up out here, okay? If you follow the directions, we won't do that. One other note right here, this small exhaust pipe right here that is not the exhaust pipe for the motorhome. The engine's a little too big for that. That is the exhaust pipe from the generator. So if the generator has been on, that will get very hot. It's important when you set up that you don't have the power cord laying against it like so, or obviously we're going to melt the power cord. You're gonna have a short, you're gonna have a problem. All right? Um, although I guess it would be a weird circumstance that you had the power cord plugged in and the generator running, but let's not do it anyway. Uh, two more things here really quick. One we have your propane. Now the propane tanks on motorhomes are all fixed, meaning they don't come off. You, you're not going to take this off, take it into town and get it filled. You're going to pull up next to some place that pumps propane. Gas stations, campgrounds, most U-Hauls, a lot of truck stops, mini RV dealers. Okay, we can all pump propane for you. You're going to pull up so this is close to the propane tank. The professionals will do the rest. Uh, propane capacity on this one isn't a lot because you're not going to use a lot in a, in a motorhome this size. Looks like it's about seven gallons, something like that. Uh, for two people in the summer, that's enough for a couple of weeks. In the in the off season when it's cooler, if you're going for more than a week, you'll you'll definitely need a propane fill while you're on the road. Um, our policy for 2017 is you don't have to fill your propane before you come back, and we don't charge you for it. So you're welcome to use the whole tank of propane. If you run out and need more, by all means, get it full. But don't worry about making an extra stop on the way home. We take care of that for you, and it's included in your rental. Since we're talking about fueling up and where you get fuel, this is the only series motorhome we rent that does not use gasoline. It uses diesel fuel. It's critically important when you go to put fuel in this motorhome that you use diesel fuel fuel. If you don't, uh, well, let's not even talk about it if you don't. It's really, 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 really bad. You're going to need a tow truck. Your trip's over. We're all going to be unhappy, okay? Um, it's clearly not covered under warranty. So you've got a fuel door that just opens up here. You've got a cap that clearly says diesel fuel. You don't even have to take the cap off on this one. You just put the fuel nozzle in here and away you go. Pretty slick, okay? Um, but absolutely no gasoline. Um, this unit also has DEF if you're familiar with diesels. You won't have to worry about that. That will be maintained for you unless you're traveling for more than 5,000 miles. 
in which case we will talk about that on your walkthrough specifically. Okay? Any questions on fuel, any questions on any of those issues, we definitely want to talk to you about those in person on your walkthrough. And I'll say again, this isn't designed to be your only walkthrough. There's going to be a few things that are specific to each user, each motorhome, each way you're going to use it. Um, that's what you come in and we do the, the checkout for, okay? A um, couple of things just real quick right here. Next to the steering wheel here, there's a little switch that if you look closely, it says emergency start. What the emergency start switch does is it allows you to start your engine if your engine battery is dead. By holding and pressing this button, it connects the house batteries to the engine battery. And basically, you're jump starting your own motorhome without getting out of the driver's seat. Okay. Pretty cool that they've done that. Power mirror controls here. You do have cruise control on the dash. I want you to be familiar with those before you uh, get in the motorhome to leave. Headlights on and off. Um, the dash is pretty standard um, newer vehicle looking dash. If you've got any questions we'll cover those on walkthrough. Um, finally for things under the hood, unless your engine light comes on or we have told you that you will need to get an oil change during your rental, which does happen on some longer rentals, if you're going on a 4,000 mile rental, we may tell you 2,000 miles in, you need to get an oil change. We'll talk about that. But uh, generally, you shouldn't even need to open the hood. There's nothing for you to do in there. Uh, if your engine light comes on um, and you don't know why, probably time to make our phone ring. It just shouldn't happen. Uh, all of our vehicles are under Ford warranty. This is essentially the same chassis, the similar design as the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. It's designed to get 20 miles to the gallon. It will get 20 miles to the gallon if you're traveling at roughly 60 miles an hour um, and driving sanely. Okay. Um, the farther you go above 60, the farther below 20 miles a gallon you're going to see. So you think you're going to do 70 miles an hour the whole time? Don't expect to get the uh, 20 miles to the gallon. It's not going to happen. Um, we do not allow towing of, with this model of any kind. Um, if you think you're going to tow with this, you need to have another conversation with us because that's not something that we allow on this particular model. These are really designed for the size that they are and that's how they perform best. Uh, other than that, it's been a beautiful day, beautiful motorhome. Hope we've answered all your questions. If we haven't, we'll see you at the walkthrough when you come to pick up. Thanks for listening. Goodbye for now.